Okay, now we've got our recorded, edited and mixed a project. We can export it to the waiting world. There are many different audio formats and it's possible to choose the format, bitrate, sample rate and many other options at export time. It's also possible to export directly to SoundCloud, the music sharing website, but you will need to have an account there though. We've already seen the bounce options and Sona's export function is very similar. It's very versatile and not only is it possible to export a project as a stereo wave file, but it's possible to export individual tracks, more than one at a time, output from buses for creating stems and just about any other possible export you can think of. All of this with full control over whether effects and automation are included or not. Before opening any export dialog, it's important to make sure that we have what we want to export selected. So if it's just a time range, make sure that that is already selected. Tracks can also be selected, but they can be selected at the export stage. And if it's a whole project or you want the whole length of a project, but just a few instruments or buses, the easiest way is to deselect all by pressing Control Shift and A. Remember, deselect all is for selection purposes, the same as select all. So once we've done that, with a project open and some audio to export, let's open the export dialog by selecting audio from the file export menu. This produces a very similar dialog box to the one we looked at when bouncing to track. The main difference is, is that we can choose to save to file rather than a track to bounce to. Other than that, they're almost identical. The source category will control what is visible in the source window below. The entire mix will show any main outs that are in use within the projects. Tracks will list all tracks. Buses will list any buses that are in use within the project. If a bus is not available here, it's because there is no active routing to it. Main outputs will show any outputs that have a bus with active audio routing assigned to them. And as we've seen, a tire mix is usually the same as the main outs. Any selection made in the source window will create one output track per selection, regardless of the source category. So in this example, in tire mix, I'd end up with two tracks, one from the Z12 output and one from Z910. This makes it possible to export all or some of the tracks separately into their own WAV files, as well as a fully mixed version, depending on what you choose here. Bus stems can also be created in exactly the same way. So let's look at that in more detail. For example, to export all of the guitar tracks as separate waves, we need to first select tracks from the source category, and then in the source window, deselect all of the tracks except the guitars. So you can see that just leaves the guitars selected. If we want to adjust the guitar stem of the guitars all mixed, we'd select buses and then just select the guitar bus. Once we have a source track or multiple tracks selected in the source window, we can set the options. We look briefly at these in the bounce to track section and we'll take another look now. The channel format sets whether we end up with a stereo wave, a mono wave or two waves, one pan fully left and one pan fully right, known as split mono. For guitar tracks, I'm going to set it to mono. Remember, we get one file per track selected in the left hand window. So we're going to end up with five separate guitar lines. The sample rate here is the sample rate the waves will be created at. Your choice will depend on your use of the material post-export. If exporting for CD, for example, this will need to be at 44.1. But if you use a higher sample rate and are going to be doing post-mix edits, it's probably best to leave the sample rate unchanged. Assuming the program you want to use accepts that rate, of course. The same goes for bit depth. This will need to be 16 for CD, but again is best left unchanged unless you need a lower rate. A bit rate reduction will always result in some degradation by introducing low level distortion. This low level distortion can be minimized by using dithering. And there are several options here. As I mentioned in the audio setup video, rectangular is the least effective, but least CPU intensive. And the POWR3 is the most effective, but the most CPU intensive. The rest fit in between those two extremes. If you're not changing bit depth, Leave this at none, as it's not necessary, and will in fact make matters worse. The Mix Enables section allows us to set what is included in the bounce or export. We can choose to include any solos or mutes, any automation, and any effects. And that's whether they be track, bus, and in the case of automation, whether clip, synth, and effects automation are included. 
Fast Bounce will export as fast as your computer allows, and if this is deselected, you can choose whether to listen to the bounce or not, and also whether any live input is included. Finally, if you don't normally run Sonar in 64-bit processing mode to save CPU, it can be turned on here. The only things left to decide now are what you're going to call the export, the format that you want it in, and where you want to store it. The name is typed in the file name field, and where it's stored is navigated to using the regular Windows navigation methods. The file type will decide the format. Select the one you want from the drop-down list. As you can see, there's several included there. Once you have all of these settings adjusted, you can save it all as a preset for fast recall next time you want the same settings. Just type the name in the preset window, and then click on the save icon. You'll also see that there are several existing presets for the most common uses such as raw tracks, no effects, and uploading to SoundCloud. To export a mix directly to SoundCloud, SoundCloud presets from the preset window. This automatically changes the output source to entire mix, but you can of course set up your own SoundCloud presets if you want to upload just tracks. Now all we need to do is to type a file name, and then click on export. Mixdown now starts, and the length of time this takes will depend on the speed of your computer and the complexity of the material being mixed. Remember, if exports and bouncers seem to take an unusually long time, changing the variable bounce buff size msec in the configuration settings may help. We looked at that in setup. OK, once Mixdown has finished, if it's your first time connecting to SoundCloud, as it is here, you'll be presented with the Connect with SoundCloud dialog where you need to authenticate your account. Once you've entered the email address and password, click on Allow. And I'm informed that I'm now connected to SoundCloud. This is a one-time process. Once this has been done once, any future SoundCloud exports will take you straight to the SoundCloud Connects box, which we see here. Here we can enter any information about the song prior to upload. Once that's filled in, Click on Share, and that song's automatically uploaded to my SoundCloud account. How long this process takes will depend on the speed of the upload connection. I mentioned earlier exporting video, but there are also choices here for MIDI Groove files, OMF files, which can be useful for moving audio tracks and stems between different audio software programs, and track templates. Select the choice you want, and then make any preference settings required in the relative export dialog boxes. And that completes how we export files from Sonar.